Good morning, gardeners. Well, we're in the high tunnel today. I need to do a little more water, and I actually lowered down the curtains a little bit here. Uh, it's getting pretty nice and warm, and I tell you, looking at our uh, cabbage, you can see it's a lot more perkier than it was the other day, and uh, I just had to take out a lot that had frost damage, but we also got some good cabbage. They're wanting to still come on here. Let's see what our high low thermometer is. And um, for those of you who have never heard of a high low thermometer, and I'll do the best, uh, explain it the best I can. You got your mercury on the low side, the silver, and then you kind of have a blue, two little lead pencil looking things right there. Now, basically this side is going to be your high side your maximum temperature so in here yesterday we reached the the temperature of 82 degrees and we look down here uh all the way all the way over here to the left and the temperature uh got as cold as 21 degrees last night we have a current degree of 72 so i'm going to go ahead and you push this button down right here and those little uh, lead pencil looking things, they slowly drop, resetting everything. So now, everything currently right now is sitting right there at, it's off a little bit. Oh no, 68. They're both 68. So sometimes the sometimes it makes a horseshoe underneath of there. But uh, everything's 68 degrees. So it's it's beautiful right now. Punxsutawney Phil actually said this morning that it's going to be uh, a short winter. So, might as well get in here and uh, get all of our spinach all uh, watered and get our broccoli going and cabbage that's still going. So, we'll go ahead and get that set up. Well, the next thing I got going on today is uh, I need to go ahead, finish sanding these uh, wood last. Might as well go ahead, get these uh, other uh, market crates kind of going today. Going to do that. Delia here is going to be planting some uh, the rest tomatoes. of the the rest of the tomatoes today. So we're still moving forward here. We'll keep you guys in touch. But just a simple. find our smoother side like I did in the other video. Good morning. The first thing I'm going to do today is um, I need more of these small trays and these were used last year so I just need to wash them and get them all disinfected so I can plant the rest of my tomatoes today. Alrighty, so um, today I'm just going to see what they look like if they need any more water. There they are. It's nice and warm in here. Um, they still seem to be very moist, so I I might put a little bit of water underneath the tray. Um, and the humidity says it's at 66.4, thereabouts. So I'm probably going to add a little bit of water to the trays. And then I will start planting or seeding the other trays of the tomatoes. Do the, the second half on these and do another tray of the rootstock and do the Florida 91s which I haven't seeded at all yet today. I'll get all that done today. So I got the other two trays back out and I'm going to do the other half of the VHM 589s and the other half of the red juice. I have a new tray here for the Florida 91s and another full tray of the rootstock. Um, he likes the Florida 91s because they're a Florida variety which do well in the heat and we have lots of heat here in Kansas. I think last year, I believe by the end of the summer they said we had 30 days of over 100 degrees or more, which is a lot. And we didn't have much rain towards the end there. Um, so this is what I'll be doing. Um, let me, I'm trying to dry my hands because those seeds are so tiny I don't want them to get stuck on my hands. And. Um, 
I'm trying to get the trays, the trays um, labeled so I don't have any issues later on. But let me let me get out the red juice and start working on that tray. We should have more than enough seeds to finish. And probably in a few days, um, I will seed some more. Like I said, these seeds are so tiny. And unfortunately, my hands are a little wet, so they're sticking to my fingers. tray which is red goose and I'm going to do the second half here and these are much easier to see because they're they're green if any so they have a green dye to them I don't know if you can see them from there but um the other ones are not and they're very hard to see once they go into the tray so let me do this here we much, much to see. so I'm pretty sure I have some doubles in the other tray because they're just so much harder to see and I will try to bury them just a little bit so like I said yesterday because when I when I water from above and I try not to water from above when they're seeding, when they're just seeds. Because they will tend to fill the well with water and then the seeds will float to another well. Okay, I finished doing the other side of the red juice. The other thing I'm doing today is you can see in some areas on the edges the soil is starting to dry and we do not want the seeds to dry and get wet again. So I'm going to put some water in the bottom of the tray. And I like watering it from the bottom so it doesn't disturb the seed while it's trying to germinate. And I will put it back in the chamber. <laughs> we're, try we're trying to keep Maddie entertained. <laughs> it's a beautiful day today. It's probably going to be in the 60s again and it's sunny. Um, I'm just going to walk over and take a peek underneath the tarp where the strawberry plants are. I don't know if Ed's been over there to look at them yet since we had that deep frost which was really really cold. We got into the like the negative teens at night and like the single digits during the day for, for quite a while. But it looks like we're coming out of it and you now we're probably still going to get many cold days. Eventually the 60s will disappear again and we'll be back into winter. But let me go take a peek and see what those strawberries look like. Let's see. Oh, they still look pretty green. They look good. And you can see we have the, I think it's four rows totally covered and we have the the straw bales just holding the tarp in place and these other two rows this row over here is actually my garlic and it looks pretty good and that's about it well i'm out here on the farm and uh you know something there that really becomes a problem to farmers uh, vegetable farmers or uh, full-grown uh, conventional farmers and that's moles uh, maybe if you have 6,000 acres and stuff a few moles ain't gonna hurt you but to small farmers we want to find these little tiny raised beds here and you can see how these moles are coming through here now we could use poison peanuts and things like that. I, I do know this, 
is that I can trap them. And uh, so let's, that's what I'm going to work on today. So let, uh, stay with me. I'm going to show you how I use a scissor trap. And we'll catch this mole. And uh, I have a lot of them in here. And I definitely don't want them going through uh, my vegetables disturbing the roots uh, uh, as they hunt for their grubs and earthworms. So let's get at it. Now to operate the scissor trap, you'll need a couple of hand setters. And basically, basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to set this trap. And this, let me move this up. This is the dog of the trap right here. And what happens is, is you set this into its trail the dirt itself lifts up thus triggering the trap making this a lethal trap i have a safety on right here but uh just for my own safety but we're going to want to make sure we take that off so let's go ahead and uh, get this set put in so i'm looking for a straight run for the uh, moles and how they're going to go and you can probe into the ground and you can feel their hole as they're passing through that's where our spot's going to be so we're going to go ahead and push this down a little bit because they're going to make a uh, we need them to um, and we need to press our scissor trap in to place and then we'll cover it back up here uh, so that way when the dirt when the moles come in uh, they'll do it but we got to set our trap off a little bit to make sure that the trap will fire when the moles come in And I have my safety on, and that's going to be my spot. So let me go ahead here. That's our trail right there. So I'm going to help this out and create a spot for that, for the scissors to go. Let's go ahead here, being careful. There it went. So the trap fired right there. And I want it to go ahead and scissor itself all the way. That's important. Because I need that, I need that closed as much as I can. Let's take that safety off and let's let it close all the way. Now we have, now we have our, our path for our scissor to close. Let's go ahead and reset our trap. And this time, I gotta take that out. There we go. And I'll put my safety on so it catches. And it has. So let's get this in place here. There we go. I'll finish setting it. Yep. There. That is in place. We'll take our safety off. We're ready for when the next time a, 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 a mole comes through here, that trap's ready to fire when it burls itself up in there. So we have everything. We already got the trap to create a scissors. So the next mole that comes in, we should have them. Okay, gardeners, I have a topic here 
that is also not mentioned much on the farm, but I think it's an important one. We have an, we have an investment in this building in our greenhouse and in our production. And one of the things we have to deal with is, and we have to think about, and that's rat and mice control. And uh, we have a lot of them. And we purchased some of these um, uh, traps here that it comes with a key that you use to, to um, open them up to keep it safe for your pets. And we take a look at our rat bait that's in here and we're going to want to clean this out uh, get it out there we go there we go we have our old bait we want to dump it out and uh, you need it really needs to be uh, we haven't done it for a while because of winter but we really you really need to get it on a schedule that your uh, like every 30 days, something like that. Clean these out, you know, uh, your, bait, your bait stations. Having a system like once a month going around to your bait stations and rebaiting them. Uh, I, I usually put quite a bit of bait in here. Put about three bars. Now, it doesn't hurt to come back and actually add a... Um, another bait at an, uh, a different brand of bait there we go so we put that bar in here it has a crossbar and that's so that the mice cannot carry or the rats carry away your bait out of here and you want to place this side along the wall uh, of your building so uh, i have that job to give myself today so let me get on that